The first experience was, it was pretty nerve-wracking to be in front of all these kids that I didn't know and um, these parents and just people in a classroom. I was very much out of my comfort zone. I'd never done anything like this. I had done JEP in the past, but it was with fewer kids and I had two other partners and we didn't have formal lessons like we had for this class where we were really responsible for getting everything through. JEP was more like helping the teacher in the class um, supplement their education. For us, this was like our own program. We were running the show. We were responsible for everything. So there was a lot more pressure and responsibility. And I definitely liked participating in that program. It was very different from the regular engineering class that you know, one usually takes. Um, it wasn't what I was expecting, although it still served its purpose in being different. Uh, it was still challenging, just not like, you know, academically, just more socially, I guess. Uh, I think the most challenging aspect was thinking of lessons and activities that would be worthwhile for the kids. It's easy to do the research on something that you pick a topic on, but to actually come up with something creative that will be interesting to the kids is pretty difficult, and to make it fit with the time constraints and the materials you would have available and things like that is pretty difficult. So it definitely takes some creativity, creativity to think of the things that will work for that. Developing lessons and making sure that everyone really understood them because everyone's at a different level. Um, there are some some were younger than others and weren't sure of some things. Uh, it was it was certainly challenging. I mean, we're we're reading about these atomic force microscopes and um, you know things that relate. Uh, things that are so small that they can't be seen by visible light. They're smaller than the visible light spectrum. Uh, and trying to explain, a, try, try and convince kids that they exist, explain how we know that they exist, and then try and relate how, you know, manipulating them on a nano level actually changes things on the micro scale and how it's so important um, was, was pretty challenging. Well, for, for my partner and I, our biggest challenge was that we were working on um, this nanotechnology topic. Um, and trying to incorporate, to, trying to make sure that we focused on the engineering aspect was really quite difficult for us and, and I, I feel like we focused a lot more on nanotechnology itself and kind of backdoored some engineering on it. Um, I think that's probably because it's the first time we've had a lesson plan focused around this um, because we're now, as my understanding is, it's the first year that Iridescent has partnered with professors in the university. At first it, it, it took a while to like break everything down into and realize that you have to think in, on a different level because they have never learned any of these concepts before. You can't just write an equation on the board and say this means this and, and they will understand it. You have to break it down and do demos and that was one of the hardest parts writing lesson plans was thinking about demos and, and really making it fun but then at the end of the day they, they leave being like oh I know what torque means now. Um, but it's not based on an equation that they, or a math topic or anything like that. It's, it's something that is actually ingrained in their head at using popsicle sticks and like Play-Doh. So um, it's, it was challenging, yes, but very rewarding um, afterwards. Most challenging was, um, I guess, thinking of design activities that related to uh, the concept you're trying to teach design activities that could be, you know, done in a half hour or like a half hour to an hour and um, that would challenge the kids to, you know, think for themselves but wouldn't be too hard that they would get frustrated and, you know, kind of give up because, you, you know, that would be like the worst thing would be for them to give up. Keeping kids entertained as you're trying to give a lecture is also, um, um, challenging at times, demos help out with that, but you can't be doing demos all the time too, so. I just remember the first, the first uh, lesson we were teaching, there was, you know, the parents were in another room, and we just had kids that were like, running up to us and like, pulling on your shirt, like trying to get your attention as you're trying to teach this class. And you don't want to discourage them, and, you know, and, you know, and tell them to like go sit down and be like strict or anything, but at the same time, he kind of had, I don't know, it was, it was interesting, especially because that was the first lesson, trying to find a balance of, okay, you know, we're, we're here to have fun, but at the same time, we're also here to, you know, teach
teach you guys something. So, and then you know, I think we had one or two lessons where something happened. Like I don't know what happened, but it happened at least once, maybe twice. Like a kid would like run out, run out of the room like crying. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was something that someone else said, like one of their like friends said, or something with the parents. I don't know, but it was just things like that that you have to be ready for, and yeah, so just kind of like move on from and just like not let it phase you, I guess. But it was interesting. Well, you kind of gotta you gotta step out of your uh, your shell and leave the college realm of like, okay, you know, just like people are gonna get things done. And things are going to go according to plan. You got to be able to deal with a little flexibility that things are going to take longer, or some kids are not going to follow instructions and so forth. So dealing it with it was really realizing that this is going to happen, and then putting in a little margin and taking you know, an extra fifty percent longer to get things done. So you have to incorporate extra time, and then just stay fluid. Don't get angry. The more you get angry, I think that that's the whole purpose. Sometimes the kids to see how tight and wound up they get you. So just staying relaxed and fluid and trying to play along with them a little bit, that kind of got them situated. Um, I think that you know, when you come down to their level, not in a condescending way, but just come down to their level and say, hey, what's going on, buddy? You know, what are you excited about? What do you like to do? That was really the big thing for, for me and how we overcame that challenge. The most challenging was uh, getting over that, like, kind of scared to interact with the, the children. Um, because you're kind of like, oh no, I don't know, I don't want to say something wrong that's gonna lead them towards thinking something uh, that's not true, or that like if I'm not able to connect with them, I was pretty nervous before the first um, lesson that like they wouldn't, con I wouldn't connect with them well just because uh, I'm like some big engineer type guy to them, and they they wouldn't really understand. But once once everything started rolling, it was it was great. We had awesome students who loved loved learning about it every week week by week and they were always excited and after like the second week when I came in and saw the smiles on the faces was like the best part so